Welcome to Engineering Culture, where we discuss how to build a culture through teamwork, accountability, and competitive greatness with thought leaders, that is coaches, uh, superintendents, principals, all of those things. We are Engineering Culture. Welcome into another edition or episode of Engineering Culture. I am Mike Sauter, and on this episode, I am uh, fortunate to have Papillion La Vista South athletic director, former junior high teacher, girls basketball coach, Mm -hmm. Jeremy Van Akron. Yes. Thanks for having me. Is that right? That's right. Girls basketball coach. A lot. Football, track, (laughs) all the above. (laughs) Um, Okay, so this is engineering culture. We talk about culture. Mm -hmm. Define culture. What does it it mean to you? Great question. Uh, Culture, I think, encompasses a lot of things. Um, It's getting buy-in from the people that you work with. Um, For lack of a better word, it's it's selling a product that you can get people to believe in. Mm. Um, It's establishing, establishing some norms, some... Uh, specific things that that you expect out of either your players or your coaches or your teachers, whatever it might be in our field. So once that once that gets established, it's it's um, now seeing things through, holding people accountable, mm-hmm. um, and developing um, a situation where people are successful. Is there a Papio South been open for? This is 21. twenty one. I thought 21. it was twenty. Yes, okay. twenty one. Yeah, twenty one years. Mm-hmm. What is the culture at Papio South? Very, I think I, I know just being around as much as I do, but. Well, we got Coach Hall back over here. <laughs> um, he bet Unified Sports. Um, yeah. I think he would tell you that it's a very democratic atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, we ask for a lot of input from our teachers and um, feed off of that. Uh, we are, uh, I think it's a pretty. I don't want to say loose, but laid back atmosphere where, mm-hmm. where we give a lot of autonomy to our teachers to, to do things um, and be creative uh, mm-hmm. at our place. So there, there is, a, although we do have some accountability there, yeah. I, don't, I mean, don't, don't, don't get it wrong, but um, we, we have expectations we have norms. We have, um, we develop a mission. Um, we have a motto that we use every year. This year, our motto is United. Okay. We want everybody to be united and be together on in everything that we do, whether that's supporting each other or supporting our kids in a different venue. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's you know, it was established from the start. Jeff Johnson was the athletic mm-hmm. director at that time, and Ian Schoenweiss was the principal, and they did a lot of planning and got things going in the right direction. And so we're trying to maintain that with some tweaks along the way. Yeah. What is – I just look at the – because sports is – what I do, but I look at the athletics, the athletic programs at Papio South, you have, you're pretty good across the board. Like you're really good in volleyball because mm-hmm. you have a tremendous volleyball coach. And- <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's pretty good. <laughs> um, you've had success in cross country and boys basketball, girls. Basketball. I mean, you've had success mm-hmm. at times in all the sports football even too. I mean, yep. there's success there. How do you maintain it? How is it how does it stay kind of all right, we're always competing or going to be competitive. Million dollar question, right? I right. mean, we we've, we've uh, been up and down in, in a few sports, but um, maintaining that level of success um, you know, in winning state championships is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, but being we we want our kids to be competitive, we want our teams to be in the mix every year. Mm. Um, that's our goal. Um, I think winning is contagious. That success yeah. is contagious. And so, yes, we've had some sports that have had really, really good success. And we've got state championships in cross country and volleyball, uh, baseball. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, the, I think some of those coaches have with, with that success have helped others along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, our coaching staff, some of our head coaches have been there from, since the beginning, and that helps a lot, you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's you know, maintaining that is getting kids to buy into what you're selling them and what you want them to believe. You mentioned Coach Tarman earlier, and and she does a lot of things outside of volleyball that people probably right. never see and, and um, don't know that she does. And so, 
I mean, like this year, she's got a really big roster. She's mm-hmm. got 17 kids. We got nine seniors, but um, managing those 17, she says she can do and, <laughs> and wants to do. And so, you know, we're gonna. We're, I'm not gonna argue with her, you know. Right. But you know, we have we have really good success in cross country. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coach, Kate, Coach Hazelhorst and Coach Stinger have been there from almost the beginning. We've got state championships in both those areas. Uh, Coach Lineham in baseball, yeah. really good success. A um, couple state championships, uh, softball, good success in softball. We haven't probably got to the point where I know Coach Horton wants to believe mm-hmm. be, but we're we're in the mix there. Obviously, having good kids and good athletes help. Um, having kids that are talented help, but you know, playing together and and being part of of a common theme is what we try to sell to our kids. So, what do, what's the future of high school athletics look like? Do you, you've been you've been not only around a lot you've been at Papio forever um you Norfolk you taught at you were Neely Lee I mean, or Lee, Lee sorry yeah. well, I don't know why right. Neely um which used to be Clark no Clark Clark Lee. Clarkson Lee yeah, yeah 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 um but you've been different places and they're all different right different challenges absolutely clearly yeah. different challenges yeah what's the future with or without club sports, select sports. With, <laughs> those aren't going away, no, right? No, those aren't going away anytime <laughs> soon. I think um, I think having kids, especially the ones that are very good athletes, um, be involved in more than one sport is big. I think three is really, really hard. How do you do that, though? Because um, anymore, it's one. Yeah, yeah, I think you have to get, get kids to buy into, hey, th- this is all I need you to do. This is the role I have for you. I'm not expecting you to probably put in the, the let's say we have a girls basketball player and a volleyball player right really good volleyball player um you know i don't expect you to put in a, a ton of time into basketball but here's what i want from you yeah. we can manage the expectation here and and um you know some some are like yeah, let's go other kids are like yeah you know i need i want a scholarship in volleyball or i want a scholarship in baseball and so uh they veer away from other sports and so you know, I learned this a long time ago when I was coaching. When you have to beg kids to come out and things don't work out. It's not very fun. Right. And they, <laughs> yeah. they look at you like, well, how come I'm not playing? You you asked me to come out. No, I'm not even playing. So right. um, there's a fine line there. But getting a lot of multi-sport sport athletes helps helps the, the success across the board. So and it's always a challenge, but we're working on it. Smaller communities, you yeah, have everybody. to to succeed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When I, you know, when I started in Lee, I, I knew no better. I was the only math teacher in the building, it was a 712 building, and uh, girls basketball, football, and track. And I saw all those kids all day long, all year long. And so different background, different culture there is, you know, farming community. So mm-hmm. um, getting them to work hard was not an issue. Yeah. <laughs> they knew what that was about. Right. Then I had a chance to go back home in Norfolk and, um, things were a little bit different than what, than what I had what was in high school, but, um, some of the same traits, you know, hardworking kids and, um, some good success there in sports too. Big hit, a lot of history there at Norfolk guy. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Ben Reese. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Reese wasn't too bad. Good football. <laughs> he was pretty good. State championship football in 93 or four. Had some good athletes back then. So, yeah. Yeah. He wasn't bad at basketball. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> ben and I, I was coaching girls basketball. And ben was a boys coach there for right. a while. So Ben and I worked together for quite a bit. I like Ben. He's a good guy. Why, just more on you, getting to know you, why Why move to Papillion and be in a middle school? Well, it's a, a, don't make a long, don't make a long <laughs> story know. short. I yeah. could do that. No, but. A long story short. So uh, John McGill, who was the – uh, the principal at uh, Papillion Middle, I met him mm. uh, at a golf tournament in May. Mm. Um, this is like the first week in May. I had taken our JV boy golfers to down here to Platte View for a golf tournament, right. and he was there watching his son. And so we just hit it off. We're talking, and, and we're talking uh, about openings, and he said he had a math opening uh, at the middle school. And I said, ooh, middle school, I don't know. And so I went home and told my wife, and the, our kids were little, really mm-hmm. young, and uh, we have family living here. And so I was surprised. She's like, well, what do you think? I'm like, you really want to do this? <laughs> and so, so we took a leap. Um, she found a job, no problem. She's a PTA physical therapy assistant. So, right. um, only opening they had was middle school and taught middle school, uh, math 
for four years out of the seven I was there. And then got into administration at the middle school for three and right. then jumped to the high school and year 11 now in that position. The story goes, if I believe, because I may or may not know the HR director that was around at this time. As, as <laughs> <me too. laughs> Is it, I think the story goes they had to talk you into going to the high school. <clears throat> a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I, you know, I had been through the coaching part, so I knew the time, right. I knew the expectations. And so, um, Jeff, I told Jeff, I said, if you really want me to do this, you got to sell this to my wife. So, yeah. uh, cause I had gotten out of coaching and, um, got back in a little bit. And so Jeff's pretty in, Jeff can be influential, you know, and so, <laughs> he likes to, you know, I've known Jeff for a long time. Jeff coached me baseball. He likes kid, to so. get his way. A yeah. Bit. Yeah. He does. He does so. <laughs> so yeah. So I, uh, jumped in and had no idea what I was doing for about two years. And, you know, luckily Jason Ryan, who's a, who's a PLV started the same time I did. Uh, so he and I talked a lot on the phone and yeah. in person for about two year period and try to get things uh, balanced and get things on the same page. So neither one of us knew what we were doing, but <laughs> now he's <laughs> now really he's moved on up. Yeah. He's moved on up. He's yeah. still an interim, I guess. Yes. I don't know. How. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know either. I joke with him every time I see him, I'm like, Hey, Mr. Principal. And he's like, nah, I don't really like that. <laughs> you know? Um, it, Biggest challenges for you guys at Papio South? What do you see? Uh, you know, we're growing a little bit. Yeah. So um, I think the growth, you know, how do you, how do you manage the growth, uh, manage numbers in your program? Some of our programs have really big numbers, and um, obviously you can't keep everybody right. in a lot of sports. And so, um, you know, keeping the kids around that, that want to be part of your program and then, Unfortunately, you know, not everybody fits the mold. So right. um, you have to have good conversations with, with kids. I, you know, I challenge our coaches on a couple of things. One is making everybody in your program feel important. doesn't matter what, what level they're at. And two, you know, when your kids leave your program and they come back and talk to you, what will they say about your program? A, and what will they tell people about your program? Mm. And so we've had that discussion quite a bit. I, I would tell you, almost all of our coaches, we, we, you know, when you go to, I see college kids at games all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, our football sidelines probably got 10 to 15 kids that come back and watch mm -hmm. a football game. And we get a lot of volleyball kids back and, you know, a lot of our college kids, uh, track and cross country running the summer with our kids. It's just, a, uh, it's great to see. It's great to see those kids still attached to our high school. So what do you, how important is facilities to, continuing to be successful i know you guys when you built your indoor area mm -hmm. <laughs> weight room yep. field house thing right that was a big deal mm -hmm. and the first one to have indoor kind of turf workout area mm -hmm. in the metro anyway in the, attached to the school right people really were like how can they you know people freaked out all that mm -hmm. it, how important is that is facilities to and what does the future look like of that yeah i think facilities are very important and then the upkeep of those right so um I've, you know i don't know if you know but we're getting turf at baseball and softball right. I knew that. uh monarchs are as well Next so year, right? that's another or this fall or this, after uh they'll start spring. baseball in a couple of weeks i yeah. think and it's supposed to be done cross your fingers by christmas yeah. softball and then, will be the so spring, spring yeah. yeah and they'll, they'll be ready in in the fall so I, I, you know, we have uh, Brett Richards our, is our director of finance, assistant soup, and Brett is is uh, very big on facilities and sticking, staying with the times and right. making sure we're not falling behind. And so I think that's the big thing. You know, when you fall behind and kids can go a lot of places to go to high school and they right. see these places that look really nice and they have great facilities, hmm. it's hard to sell sometimes when, when you're behind. So, um I, I think it's very important, not only for the kids in our district and the families and the taxpayers to to make sure that um, things look nice mm -hmm. and to make sure that, um, you know, our kids are, are training at a high level. I think that's the best part, too, that, you know, we now we have an opportunity. There's no excuses. We got we have facilities that the kids can really train in year round. So better than college in most places, probably in some places. Yeah. 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 What is a um, couple two two more? We're recording mm -hmm. this after we just saw big blowouts in football, high school football. Yeah. What do you do? Like we, we're talking 90 to nothing. We're talking 70 to nothing. Like what, how does that 
<laughs> Does it get corrected? <laughs> is there a way to have that corrected? Is it just eh, kind of sign of the times? Yeah, I, you know, you got to remember, I started an eight-man football, right. so I saw a lot of you saw a lot of a lot eighty-two of to seven. Yeah, or yeah, and, and we had we had the forty-five point rule, so right. um, if a game got to that. 45 point differential in the second half is over. Maybe that's something for probably something that, you know, versus I mean, I, running clock. Cause, right. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but adding the running clock to 11 man totally, helped. I think helps yeah. a lot. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to get to that point, but yeah, it's tough. I, I, I look at some schools that are struggling with numbers. How do you, I think the first thing is how do you increase numbers in your program? Right. Yeah. I mean, teams are, teams are dropping their JV program, their reserve program, mm -hmm. some cases, freshmen. freshmen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, Numbers is is big, and especially when they have you have you have a pretty good enrollment. So how do you get kids out, yeah. and how do you sell your program to them? So right, I know there there was talk about um, not using enrollment numbers mm -hmm. as a guide. Well, how do you? Is it the Premier League where you go <laughs> like relegated <laughs> yeah. or yeah. what? Like yeah. that's hard, right? Um, I don't know if you can really do that and be fair. Um, well, there's been a lot of discussion. Um, in our district meetings and, and through the NSA about using a, some sort of multiplier, right. um, using your free and reduced rates and your, your percentage right. and putting that calculation in with your enrollment. I, I, there's probably something to that. I don't know. I'm not the smartest guy. Right. I'm, I'm a math major, but I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to do all that, but there's, I've seen multiple, probably something to do that. I've seen a lot of multiplier combinations oh, yeah. of people putting it out there, but I just, I don't it, know my, me personally, I don't, I guess I don't know how you fix I, yeah, it. Yeah, I don't. There, there's some states who have it. I mean, they really right. do. And I, I mean, you probably have to do some research with some of those states and figure out exactly how they do it. But there's some extreme things out there too that you'd probably. I mean, don't we're pretty conservative states, so I don't know yeah, how you get that far. I don't know. Okay, last question. Mm -hmm. When you leave Papillion South, the Jeremy Van Akron legacy will be what? Oh wow. You should have given me this question ahead of Because <laughs> um, you put blood, sweat, tears, life, hours upon hours. I mean, people say I work a lot. Athletic directors work way more than me. Yeah, and I've seen you at a lot of places. Around there, so. <laughs> um, but I, your, your legacy yeah, is... Yeah, so it's an what? interesting question because I pose the same question to, to our coaches, right? So right. I think... Um, work my tail off. I, I lead by example. Um, I'm hoping this is what my coaches would say. Um, if they, if they need something, I get it. I try to get it for them as much as I can. You know, the, the key I think is to hire good coaches and then leave them alone as much as you can. Let them do what they let, let them do their job. But my door is always open. I got people coming in and out all the time and um, not only coaches, but kids, you know? And so I think somebody who is willing to listen, uh, and build relationships with people. So I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, the state championships are great. Uh, the, all of the awards our kids get are great. I mean, you know, we, we had a school of that are in, is in year 21. We got 10, 10 Gatorade players of the year yeah, on our wall. And it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so it speaks volumes about um, the talent kids we have, but not only that, but you know, the Gatorade player of the year thing is involves more than just being talented, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, we got good kids academically. We got really good kids and got kids that make really good decisions. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, servant leader, hard worker, somebody that um, will go the extra mile to help somebody out. Um, always there. I get phone calls. My bus isn't here. Uh, <laughs> all those things. So I, I help as much as I can. I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes along the way. There's no doubt about it. Um, but, you know, when you make a mistake, I, I tell our coaches, I, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Mm. I'll fix it, and I won't do it again. Yeah, it's the only thing you can do. So, okay, I lied. One last one. This is yeah, more funny. Yeah. Very last one. Who is um, more intelligent or better looking, or both? Uh oh, you or the person that looks exactly like you? He's got longer hair. He does. So probably, <laughs> probably depends on what kind of hairstyle you like. <laughs> you know, but. Um, I don't know. Probably him, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but Who's older? He's older. Oh, yeah. like, Seven like, minutes, eight minutes, uh, something like that. Nah, right. I hope my mom doesn't listen to this because I, I should know that. Though. Yeah, he's Miller seven or eight. Yeah. 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 
How do you feel? Yeah, about absolutely. That? They got a young How did that happen? Up. I don't know. A great question. <laughs> a great question. Not Papio South. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Jeremy Van Akron, Papillion South Athletic Director. Thank you so much you for your Thanks time. You for having me, Mike. Appreciate, appreciate it and all you do. And uh, appreciate you letting me be around as much as I am in your building. You bet. Anytime. You know that. Yeah. Thanks. You bet. A Heard at Sports Network production. <laughs>